Welcome to the Autosportradio.com 2021 show. We are once again at the Grand King Race Shops, which is a working museum. If you get a chance, you need to come by here. They got some great old cars, really kind of interesting, and some of the uh, uh, Evil Knievel stuff, and even handwritten letters from Evil you could find interesting. So if you uh, have a chance, come by. They're located at 8155 Crawfordsville Road, and it's in the old Grand King shop right next to where uh, the, uh, what was the other? Uh, 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 but yeah, the Watson shop. AJ Watson. So if you know where AJ Watson shop was right next door is Grand King where he's been. And this place is much better than it used to be, let me tell you. Today's show is presented by Honda and Honda HPD, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series, SVRA, McGilvery's Pub and Eatery and Speedway, and VP Insurance. A couple of things to mention. If you're looking for something for a Christmas present for somebody and you don't know what to get them, I highly recommend the 500shop.com. If they don't have it, it doesn't exist. Mike Spangle will take, tell you what he's got. If you tell him what you're looking for, he'll tell you if he's got it. Or you can call him. His cell number is 317-985-0214. Is it time yet to have your roof inspected, see if it's time to replace it? Well, I have call Ted. He can take care of it. Get somebody out, give you an appraisal if it needs to be replaced, or just check it out and say, no, you're good for another five years. Give Ted a call. The number is 317-500-3370. And uh, has it ever crossed your mind? Gee whiz, maybe I ought to get involved, or I know somebody might want to get involved with sponsoring or being associated with a race team. Well, Top Gun is ready. They're looking for you. They can use some help. So if you think you know somebody or you are somebody who could use some exposure, give them a call. The office number is 317-820-3595. Again, they're located at 8155 Crawfordsville Road and Top Gun Ray Shop is on this property. It's right up the hill from where we are now. So stop in. You know, everybody loves to go to a dentist. Well, I can tell you one that you will enjoy going to and that's at Indy Dental Group. Indy 500 veteran, Dr. Jack Miller and his wife, Dr. Liz Lewis have a spectacular practice. You'll love the people, the techs they got, phenomenal. If it's time to have your teeth checked, give them a call. Make an appointment. Number is 317-846-6125. My computer repair guy, Steve Freeze, has got an office. It's located at 549 Fleming Street, which is on West Washington, about a mile east of uh, Lyndhurst. He's on the north, uh, he's on the northeast corner behind a dental office. You can't miss it. It's a long strip building. Get a hold of him. Tell him what your problem is. If you can't get to his shop, he'd come to you. Number is 317. 317- 938-7711. You know, there is uh, people that wonder, what do these people enjoy about riding these fast cars, these Indy cars? Well, you can find out for yourself. The Indy racing experience. Take a ride in a two-seater. They got some great drivers. You'll have a good time. And I've only know of one person that got out and said, whoa, it scared me to death. They love it. They get out and they're thrilled to death. So go to IndyRacingExperience.com. Find a date that'll work for you, be it this year or next. And book yourself a ride in the promo box. Put DK1 and get a 50% discount. Or you can call Sean in the office. Number is 317-243-7171. <clears throat> is it time to uh, renew your insurance for your home, your car, your uh, property, your commercial property, or do you need life insurance? Mike Pardee can help you. You'll find, as we all have, that you get better coverage for less money. Give him a call. Tell him what you need. He'll help you. Number is 317-248-0070. That's VP Insurance. They're located at 5004 West 16th Street in Speedway. If you ever wanted, or if you have a vintage car and you want it restored, if you wanted one, got an idea for you. Call the, the Grand King Shop. Tell them what you have or what you want, and they can help you out. The number is 317-820-3595. And while you're there on the phone, if you would like to take a tour of the shop, talk to them. Set it up. They'd be glad to have you. We are here today with somebody, when you look at this picture, you'll say, got to be a cheerleader, got to be a prom queen, probably was both, got to be a model, but strangely enough, she's a race car driver. She comes from a family that the entire world knows about, and she's carrying on the tradition. This is Lonnie Unzer. She is the daughter of a former 500 driver, a finished second in uh, Le Mans, a fine driver himself, Johnny Unzer, who was part of the uh, the uh, uh, road to Indy program and, and race control. And Lonnie, it's a pleasure to have you here. I've been following you for the last probably year or so, seeing what you're doing, where you're going to. And you seem to have pretty good success. It seems that the bloodline hasn't stopped. 
Yeah, well, first of all, I'm super glad to be here talking with you. And thank you so much for the kind introduction. And yeah, you know, I've just been enjoying racing so much. I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it. And I've been having just the time of my life. You've been in a number of different cars. They're all closed wheel cars up to now that I'm aware of in the sports car world and so forth. Um, how did you get into that since the rest of your family came from a different direction? So I actually started off when I was a senior in high school by going to the BMW performance driving school. And my dad said, hey, Lonnie, you can go to this school because I was able to do something similar when I was your age. It will make you a better driver on the street. And of course, I was ecstatic because I grew up enjoying going to the indoor go-kart track. And I had a lot of fun. You know, we'd go with my ski team and I just had a natural knack for it. And so it was always something that was in the back of my mind, but I couldn't ever do it growing up where I did in Idaho. So when I got to go to that driving school, I just had an amazing time. And I can remember sitting there after the first day of driving, looking at my dad over Mexican food saying, dad, is there any way I can do this? And so you could tell he started to think about it. And then uh, before you know it, the both of us were coming up with a plan to kind of start racing. And we decided that Spec Miata was the best option because it's so competitive and the cars are so close. It teaches you so much and makes you grow so fast over a short amount of time. Because I'm, I was starting late, we decided that that was the best place that I could further my driving career. Well, obviously it's worked out well that you have, uh, you have done well for yourself. You haven't embarrassed yourself or your team by any means. Um, <laughs> what does your mom think about this? I mean, she had your dad had to put up with that. All of a sudden now you are and she's back at it again. So my parents actually discouraged me from going racing because, <laughs> yeah, they know the challenges that exist with racing and they've seen the struggles that all of my family has gone through. And in racing, the highs are so high and the lows are so low. It's also very hard to find funding. So, you know, they kind of discouraged it. But then when I showed enough interest, they were, of course, now they support me 100 percent. But um my mom gets nervous, uh, but I really think at the end of the day, she just wants me to do well, which is pretty cool. And she she thinks it's awesome. She's happy for me and happy that I'm following this dream of mine. Do you travel the country? I know you started out racing around Colorado and regional racing there. Have you expanded your your current series that you're in that go across the country? Yeah, absolutely. This year I've been traveling like crazy. It's been amazing. I am currently racing in the World Racing League, uh, which is an amateur endurance racing series in a Porsche Cayman. And that has been amazing because it gets, it enables me to see more of the endurance racing side of it. And then I'm also racing in the IMSA Mazda MX-5 Cup, which is, you know, intense hardcore sprint racing. So I'm getting a great feeling for both. And it's just been an amazing season. Being in the car so much has just been incredible and has taught me so much every single weekend. I learn a tremendous amount. You know, it's kind of interesting. You look at the Unser family, and I think your great grandfather was uh, one on a motorcycle, a Pikes Peak climb. Uh, your grandfather, Jerry, uh, testing here and he lost his life. But since then, Al Sr. has won the 500 four times. Uh, Bobby has won it three times. Al Jr. has won it two times. So you got a, got a boatload of Borg Warner trophies around the Unser households. Are you able to contact them and talk to them and, and get advice and suggestions on how to improve yourself? Yeah, absolutely. My family is great. Um, unfortunately, due to some deaths in the family, we have come together, which is is nice, but it's also under uh, really unfortunate, sad circumstances. But, you know, whenever I see them, they're always asking me about my racing and, you know, give me advice wherever they can. So I just have this wealth of knowledge to pull from and, uh, like I said, uh, or I'm not sure if I said it, but 
Robbie has been a tremendous help in my racing career. At the beginning, he would come to almost every Spec Me Auto race I'd have, and he would act as my coach and my mentor. And, you know, I can remember I had a bad wreck in one of my Spec Me Auto races, and he was over there just trying to fix the car, pulling off parts, and really just trying to hustle to get it back out on track. And, you know, that's the kind of family that everybody wants. And so I'm very lucky to have that. Well, I was always sorry to see Robbie leave. I had him on the program a, a couple of times and he was always a nice kid, always friendly, always. And he did halfway decent, but he didn't stay there long enough. I don't think he, if, I think if he'd have been able to stay in the series in the IndyCar series a few more years, he might've done quite well, but he was just a good guy, a good kid at the time. He's not a kid anymore, but married an old married guy now. And, but uh, it seemed to me that would be a good young man to have help you because he certainly had the knowledge to do it. And of course, his dad, I'm sure, told him a few things every so often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. He, um, you know, like all of us or many of us run into funding issues, uh, kind of cut his career short. But he is tremendously talented and he has a very, very good knowledge of car setup. So that was very helpful going into Spec Miata when I didn't know much about setups. And, you know, we kind of, I worked with Robbie to uh, set up the, the cars, which aren't that complicated to set up. But, you know, in Spec Miata, every 10th counts, really. You're not kidding. In an Indy car, every hundredth of a second counts. That is uh, also true. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting. You're a college graduate. What was your degree in? College for something that is a little bit different. I went uh, for landscape architecture, which is kind of cool because I've wanted to mold that into racing and hopefully one day design racetracks. There's only a few people in the world who do it, but I think I have the perfect background to be able to design some pretty awesome racetracks. Well, you need to get together with Tony Cotman. Yeah, I know. Good. I actually, he's a good friend of my dad. So yeah. um, we've kind of been talking back and forth a little bit. Yeah, well, if they build a new track, you can go out and do the, the landscape design for them. Exactly. Well, that's good. Do you use that at all in between racing or when you're not, you know, when the season shuts down, do you do any work with the landscape organization? No, not really. Um, I have kind of stayed in contact with uh, the people that I went to school with, uh, my professors and such. I work part time for one of my professors as a research assistant. It's not that many hours, but it's my way to kind of stay involved with that world. Well, that's very interesting. Um, you know, the obvious question comes up with the name Unser. Do you have a lot of pressure to say, oh, this is an answer. We got to watch her. She should be gangbusters. Do you have a problem or do you feel you have to, you know, honor the name and do well? Yeah, no doubt there's pressure. <laughs> there's quite a bit of pressure. Uh, I didn't feel it so much earlier on in my career, but for some reason, as uh, this year has gone on and I'm in my first year of pro racing, it has definitely felt like pressure but you know at the end of the day I just have to take that as motivation and inspiration to do the best that I absolutely can well everybody that's come ahead of you has done that by the number of Borg Warner trophies sitting around houses out that way so yeah sure exactly <laughs> um do you ever do you run across Cody you see her at all yeah, we saw her at my Uncle Bobby's funeral, and um, she seemed to be doing great. Uh, she's still doing a lot of the scuba diving and staying very involved in that and, you know, running her own nonprofits, which is very cool. So um, it was I hadn't seen her and a lot of the family for quite a while until um, uh, was it in May, I think. I think I had her once. I remember when Alice the third was running, she would be at all the races. Yeah. And somebody would help her. They put her up on the pit stand and she'd sit there and watch him run. Uh, yeah, she's a cool girl. She's yeah. very neat. Well, I think I I seen to me I had her on one time when she was in town, if I'm not mistaken. But now the obvious question: where do you want your career to go? Where are you headed? I have come up with the goal of being in the 
IMSA WeatherTech Series and the FIA World Endurance Championship, kind of more focusing on the sports car route. However, that being said, if there are opportunities elsewhere that present themselves, I would take it. I would run NASCAR. I would run dirt. I would do anything with four wheels and a motor because that's how much I love the sport. I um, can see myself doing all of that, hopefully, in my career. Well, it seems to me that you know somebody that's involved with the Road to Indy program. <laughs> and if there's somebody, yep. that, if he can't pull a string somewhere, and get somebody's attention. <laughs> yeah. Have you, has it crossed your mind that you, if the opportunity presented itself to work your way up and go to IndyCar? Yeah, of course. The, the thing that makes open wheel racing more challenging is it's a lot more expensive and, you know, you're running for yourself. A lot of times in uh, the, these endurance sports car races, you um, have a co-driver who oftentimes you coach, you can coach, and that's how you get your ride. And so it's just kind of all about, for me right now, going where the opportunity opportunities exist. What teams do you drive for? You might as well give them a plug. So I'm in the Porsche Cayman, I am driving with round three racing, and I've been with them for two years. And it's been absolutely fantastic. And then I'm driving in the Mazda MX-5 Cup with Hicks and Motorsports. And both teams are really just my second family. I love all those guys so much. It's um, We have a lot of fun, but when it comes time to put our heads down and work, we work. Well, I tell you, that that's phenomenal. Do you have any problem being a female? Do any other drivers give you any kind of what she doing here type thing? Or do they realize you're there and you're serious and, and you're competitive? Yeah, you know, it, um, it's it been pretty good. People treat me um, pretty good. But, you know, as, as a female, if, if you do bad, you do terribly. If yeah. you do pretty good, you're amazing, you know? So it's kind of, there's no in between there. Um, and everybody kind of has a magnifying glass on you and um, kind of judging every move sort of it feels like sometimes but you know at the end of the day I just I really personally just want to be another race car driver um you know the answer and being a female is cool but I want to go to the track and be respected as any other race car driver well I, I my head is off to you that although I'm not wearing one <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, I don't think it's like it used to be in the early days when I first started in the 60s. A female even walked by, they kind of, what's she doing here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's still some of that, but it's very cool to see more and more women getting involved in the sport. And I'm part of a program called Shift Up Now, which helps inspire uh, confidence and um, really success in this sport. And uh, that it's an honor to be a part of that. Now you work for Cooper Tire. Yes, I do a little bit of work with them um, when I can. And we actually have been lucky enough to um, kind of start the program with World Racing League, trying to get uh, people on the Cooper Tires. So uh, these tires we've realized are not only are they fast compared to our competitors, but they also last a lot better than our competitors in World Racing League. So when last year, when we were racing the Porsche Boxster, almost every weekend we'd turn our fastest lap at the end of the race. I think that goes to show a lot about a tire after eight hours of running. You're not kidding. But I think you you work with them on, on kids teaching them how to drive and what to be careful of and so forth as well, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. So back in uh, 2019, I believe, I was a large part of Tread Wisely, which is kind of educating teens on the importance of taking care of your tires. And, um, you know, it's as a race car driver, we, we have to have our tires in good conditions and we're changing our tires almost every time we go out. So um, I'm very passionate about that. And it was very cool to be a part of Tread Wisely. Well, I'll tell you, they're keeping you busy. Oh um, yeah. It, it's interesting to talk to you and listen to your side. I, as I said, I've had uh, all of the answers to my knowledge that are in the, involved in motorsports, including Al the third uh, on the program. So I'm very pleased to have you join me. And uh, we're, I'm going to follow you because you are on Facebook and you're, you, 
I don't know how you manage to get in the front. When you open it up, there's a bunch of stories, <laughs> and you're right there. I, don't, I said, good. I don't have I'm to look happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to search for it. I just click it on, and here I are, here you are. And sometimes you're talking oh, about where you are and pictures and so forth. It's very, very good. You've got my attention. So if you got mine, I'm sure you got a lot of other people. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. And hopefully when I put out that you're on the program, we'll get a bunch of uh, people watch and I'll hear, I'll get comments. And if I do, I'll forward them to you. Okay. Thank you so much. It was well, awesome talking to you. Uh, and you said you're into endurance type racing. I know your dad liked that. He ran the 24 hours of Daytona. He ran uh, uh, Le Mans and finished second one year. Mm -hmm. are, are you looking to go a 24 hour Daytona or, and or Le Mans? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's my goal. That's the, uh, the dream, really. Um, and kind of following my dad's footsteps and other my other of my family's footsteps uh, in that regard. But uh, I think to complete a 24 hour race and these endurance races, just so much can happen that once you do complete those races, there's no greater feeling. Yeah, I, I tended a number of went to uh... A team I work for ran the 24 hours of Daytona a number of times. Jeez Louise. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. And, you yeah, know, kidding. from behind the scenes, car prep, not that any of these types of racing isn't very heavy in car prep, but going into a, like a 24 hour race, it's even more so. Yeah, that's for sure. I know when I got done, I couldn't wait to get there and go to motel, back to the motel because I was up <laughs> 24 hours and went, jeez. Yeah, it's yeah. exhausting. I mean, you get four hours into the race and you're like, we still have 20 hours to go. It just doesn't feel right. And, and initially when I went, I thought, well, the driver drives four hours, he gets out of the car, big deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some right. Of them, some of them had to help get out of the car after four. Yeah. Hours. It's tough. Yeah, it's it's uh, no joke. I mean, this is why it's called a sport. <laughs> yep. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to chat. I've been ch chasing you around for a couple of months and you've been busy and on the road but you had a day and you accepted and here we are and i appreciate taking the time i'm glad to have spoken with you but i told you i was looking forward to this because i you know i wanted to talk to you and see how you are and what you are and who you are we've done all that yeah well thank you so much it was a pleasure to be on and sorry about being hard to um, schedule with i just i've been doing a lot of instructing lately so teen stuff and then racing stuff as well and so i'm on the road every week lately which is awesome but uh <laughs> makes for sitting down for a zoom call a little bit challenging <laughs> <laughs> well i appreciate until your dad i said hello I, said, I haven't talked to him in a number of years but uh i think you've had him once or twice anyway yeah i will do He's a nice guy, good guy, good driver. You're, you're learning from a good one. And Robbie, give Robbie my best. I will. I will. Thanks for being with us. And we look forward to uh, that I can get a hold of you again. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Thank you. My guest has been Lonnie Unser. If you didn't know about her before, you do now. Uh, and you can find her on Facebook. You'll see what she's doing, where she's doing it. Sometimes she tells you where she is. And sometimes she puts pictures of what she's doing. So check it out <laughs> on Facebook. Lonnie Unser. We have some other guests lined up in the coming days, so uh, keep us in mind until the next time, Don K. saying thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. See you again.